at some of the posts, I wish we'd had church last night. Some of y'all said y'all want to have church. Yeah. Well, on that. Amen. We sure would have had it last night and tonight. Now, tomorrow you've been on your own because uh, we're taking off tomorrow. But you could have it without me. But I, I, I did have a little thought there Sunday about uh, going at least Monday and Tuesday with it. But I didn't do it. You know, I thought, well, everybody's tired. And, and, but we should have, after the way God blessed us down at that water hole. Oh my God. Wasn't that something? Yes. That was something yes. like church. Hey, Sunday night, buddy. That, that put no slouch either. That it carried right on, didn't it? Yes, it carried right on. Yes, yes, it did. It sure did. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Sunday night, I believe some of us might have got the Holy Ghost. What yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's come together and have church tonight. I, I'm oh, excited God. about church. Now, Rhonda's got a report to give you, and I'm going to take her microphone back. I want you guys to hear what Rhonda's got to say. Y'all remember Sunday when she come up here? Yeah. Okay. Just listen to this. Had that old boot on? Yes, she had that big boot on. She ain't got no boot on tonight. The doctor told me today, no boot. My bones juicing together now. I won't have to have the bone take out my hip. She put me in regular shoes, told me walk regular, go back in four weeks, and if the plate's still bothering me, they'll take the broken plate out. But other than that, God has answered my prayer. Thank you.
and told them to go out into the highways and byways and preach the gospel. And he warned them. He said, I'm going to send you out as sheep among wolves. I'm going to send you out and you're going to be like sheep among wolves. What does that mean? That means the world is going to really tear you up when you stand for Jesus. That means the adversary is going to get so mad and so angry, he's going to hit you with all he's got. God, I feel a wave of the Holy Spirit there. He's going to work through your church. He's going to work through your family. He's going to work through your finances. He's going to work through your health. Well, a pastor shouldn't get sick, right? You're human just like we are. Not just that, sissy. It's going to rain on the just as well as the onions. Because God is no respect for a person. The Bible is very clear. Choir, y'all better come on or I'll preach her. The Bible is very clear. It was once appointed unto man to die. That's mankind. Y'all come on, come on, come on. And after this, he said, the judgment. So we have an appointment. The just and the unjust is going to stand before God. You got an appointment. Right now, you're young. Probably good health. Probably ain't worried too much about doctors. Well, I know we, we have young doctors, don't we? And it, it's aggravating. Yeah. I go to them more than I want to. You hear all these arguments about it. Insurance is not. I had an insurance lady call the house the other day. Pick out a couple songs, y'all. I had an insurance lady call the house the other day, and she said, "Mr. Atkins, I got your records right here, and I see you went to the doctor on Monday. She already knew this was like Wednesday. She already knew I'd been down to uh, Family Healthcare. She said, I see you went down there on Monday. I said, Yes, ma'am, I did. And she said, Well, why haven't you had an upper GI yet? I said, because y'all won't pay for it. And she said, oh, yes, we will. And I said, well, I had a colonoscopy down there a couple months back, and you sent me letters and denied and said you wasn't going to pay for it. She said, but we didn't have a doctor's referral when you did it. And that's the first thing they told me, go back to my doctor and have him send them a referral, and then they paid it. I said, well, ma'am, you will, you will have a referral. Because I will go to my doctor, and I, I have been to it, and I'll tell him to send you a referral because I'm going to go down and have that done. And the reason I'm going to go have it done is because I have been in severe pain for a month now. Both sides hurt, but especially right there. And I have been to this altar. I have been prayed. You boys have prayed for me. And I think that God gives doctors knowledge to help us. Now he can perform a miracle if he wants to. And I've asked him to. But it is appointed unto us. So it's going to rain on me as well as it is that cold hearted sinner out there. Probably a little bit more. You ever seen somebody lose that they lived their whole life a drunk wasn't much good for anything in, in man's point of view and seemed like that they just was healthy as a horse, got along good. You know what the difference between that guy and me and you is? We've got salvation. Yeah. And we may have to go before he does, but look where we're going. Amen. I heard Amen. my mama say one time about her children because we had a couple that wasn't in church yet. And I heard her say one time, she said, oh well, if somebody has to go, I'd rather it be me because I'm ready to go. Amen. Not somebody that's lost. Because whether you want to believe this or not, if you die lost, your soul will immediately descend into the pits of hell. Amen. Yeah. If you die a Christian, you're going to be carried away by the angels in the Father Abraham's book. You know why, Brother Bob? Because that paradise. Yep. Yes, I know why. Because you've got a, not an insurance policy from God, you've got an insurance policy.
it, it, is, it is a promise yeah. that the world yeah. can't take from us. Yeah. It's a promise that sickness can't take from us. Yeah. It's a promise that finances can't take from us. Yeah. All we got to do is hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah. Jesus made a statement. You guys got one picked out already? Jesus made a statement. He was praying to his Father in heaven. And that's the reason I believe you have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He didn't pray to himself. He prayed to his Father. And he said, Father, all that you've given into my hands, I've lost none of them, save the son of perdition. Right. That was Judas. Right. Judas was born for the purpose that he did, to betray Christ. Christ already knew before he was ever conceived in his mother's womb what kind of mind he was going to have, what kind of heart he was going to have. As a matter of fact, that they, they, they was a woman... I gotta say it because the Lord put it on my heart. You guys, hold on just a second. There was a woman come into a house one time, and she had a very expensive box of alabaster oil, and that was very, very, very expensive stuff in those days. Yeah, and she took that oil, went straight to Jesus, and took that box of oil, poured it on his feet, poured it out, and you know what Judas said. What is the meaning of this waste? That oil could have been sold and distributed to the poor. And Jesus knew his heart and he said, he wasn't worried about the poor. He was concerned about the bag, which was the treasury bag. Because he cared more about the money than he did the poor. Even when he walked with Jesus, he cared more about the money than he did the poor. Yes, he saw the miracles. Yes, he sat at the table. I do not believe he was in the feet washing. And the reason I don't believe he was in the feet washing is because when Jesus dipped that bread in the bowl with him, he said, what you do, do quickly. And the Bible said he got up and left immediately and went to the Pharisees and said, I will give him to you for 30 pieces of silver. Because you see, Jesus had that one special spot. He went and prayed and him and his disciples knew about it. But the Pharisees didn't know where it was at. And they was willing to pay anybody to tell them where he's at. So they could go arrest him. Put him in prison. I, God, buddy, I got a hush. I'm going, Bobby. I'm going. There's no doubt in my mind that when Jesus was arrested, Pilate had thoughts in his head, well, I'll scourge him a little bit and let him go. Because I got to I gotta please the multitude. I gotta, I gotta please this Jewish crowd because there's an uproar, and this is the only way that I can stop this uproar. I'll score him a little bit. I'll slap him on the hand and let him go. He didn't know, did he? Pilate didn't know. Even he was born for a purpose, and his purpose was to give in to the Jews and have the Son of God crucified. He tried to get out of it. He did. Hey, I got a man over here named Barabbas. He's in jail for murder and sedition, which was treason. He's in jail for crimes against, against the Roman Empire. I'll let him go. Or I'll crucify him and let Jesus go. And they said, no. Release Barabbas and crucify Jesus. Shall I crucify your king? And then they committed the blasphemous statement of we have no king but Caesar. Okay? After everything that they had went through, all that God had done for them, they said we had no king but Caesar. Caesar represented the world. After everything that God has done for me and you, how can we stand back and say we had no king but the world? How can we do that? How can people walk away like the man that told Kevin, I just don't want to do this no more? How can you just walk away when you've been in the pulpit singing the gospel, when you've been a deacon in the church, when you've preached his gospel, when you've visited with the, with the church and you've seen the goodness of God? How can you just walk away and say, I don't want to do it no more? How does that work? That's sad. There's a scripture that said it would have been better not to know the way than to know it and then walk away from it. In other words, there are going to be degrees of punishment in hell. 
when that man that testified in that tent saw those demons are widening the borders of hell and the bricks falling down and he said they was a, a, a really, really, really deep pit and they was stages and quarters. Think about that for a minute. People's going to be put in, and it's all going to be hell. Don't get me wrong. It's all going to be hell. It's all going to be torment. Everyone's going to have a flame of fire around about them. But they'll be tormented child molesters. Before I got saved, I don't say it very much now. Sometimes I do think it. God forgive me. But before I got saved, I made the statement, I'd like to get my hands on a child molester, on the ones that hurt that baby and beat him to the end of his life and kill him. Because it makes me so angry for anybody to harm a child. But you can't feel that way, can you? you got to leave it in God's hands. Why well, you got picked out, ladies? 
blue who all these come to, so everybody have one, but get with me.
You know, I've been to a couple of churches. I've been to a handful of different churches in my life. Probably can count all the churches I've been on two hands easily. But the few that I've been to down North Carolina, they don't have the opportunity that you've got to stand up and ask, uh, ask requests. They seem like they had an agenda. You started at this time and you quit at this time and you probably wanted yeah. to say a word. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes when I come in this church, I don't need a drink of water. I need manna from heaven. I'm starting yeah. today. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes some people may not need no manna. They want a drink of water. Just to yeah. help them do another day till two this year. But I wish I could hear and understand a little better. Because I know sometimes he preaches stuff that's coming right at me, but I ain't catching it all. I'm trying. <laughs> but I'm feeling all the pain and all the guilt. I do stuff on fire all the time. Yes, and I do make mistakes. I make mistakes that you wouldn't yes, believe sometimes. Especially when things are going just right for somebody else, but they're going back to me. <laughs> I do make mistakes. And everybody does. There's nobody, not one in, not one nowhere is perfect except one. We sure have. Sometimes I think I ain't even close to it. I got to, I got to do something. And the only thing I know to do is, Lord, help me through another day. And at the end of the day, forgive me of all my sins. And at the beginning, go with me, Lord. I need your help all day. Oh yeah. Has anyone got a good testimony, Lord? Jeffrey, them kids want you to sing. Let me tell you about Jesus. Bring them children with you. Go ahead.
And a price for all my guilty No care that much about me Everything about my Jesus
while we're down in that creek. And then when we come to church that night, just ain't no day God gonna do you like that. <laughs> Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. There ain't no day God gonna gonna bless you like that. I don't have a pressing message tonight, but I hate I hate coming off of services like that, like Sunday. I hate, I hate coming off of them into the next service and it's a little quieter than it was Sunday. Uh, I hate coming off of those services. I hate coming off of, of, a, of a whole week of hearing Robbie Hawkins preach and following him because I can't preach like Robbie Hawkins. But thank God I am. My identity is Kevin in the eyes of God. And I want to do what he wants me to do. And I'm just following his lead tonight because I don't have anything, like I said, that is very pressing on me. But I do have some scriptures I'd like to read. But first, first though, before we read any scriptures, can I sing you a song just quick? Yes, so 
spoke to me while I was singing and said, there's more. There you go. What we, what we experienced Sunday was there is more. There's more of that to come. There's more of that available. There's more of that for us if we want it. But we have to want it. Amen. Bobby's been feeling it all night. Why is he the only one feeling it? Church, there's more. There's more for everybody if we just want it. I don't think he's the only one feeling it tonight. I think there's, church, there's, there's members right here feeling it tonight. Turn to Revelation chapter 1 and let's read a couple verses. Let's just let God have his way. I may not be up here five minutes. But I know one thing. I'm going to feel I'm going to get my blessing and I'm going to feel good. In the morning. I'm going to do what he wants me to do tonight. Revelation chapter 1. Let's go to verse 17. Oh, I love the Lord and I'm so glad he's alive tonight. John said, when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. Talking about Jesus. Laid his eyes on Jesus. I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me and he said unto me, Fear not, for I am the first and the last. I am he that lives and was dead. Behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. I have the keys of hell and of death. May God had a blessing to that reading. Ain't that good tonight? That's some of the best scriptures you could ever read in this world. That's some of the best scriptures that any religion has in any of their Bibles or their uh, Korans or whatever they may have. Their instruction manual is what I call this. That's some of the best scriptures that you'll ever read. Why? Because they are true and they are faithful. And we serve a, a we serve a God that is alive forevermore. Amen. 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 We Amen. serve a Savior that rose from the grave. Amen. They may have put him on a cross and hung him and, and, and killed him, put him in a tomb, but three days later, Brother Kenny, he rose from the grave. He's not dead anymore. Our Savior is alive. I serve a risen Savior. I serve a living Savior. I serve someone that is alive forevermore because he said, Behold, I am alive forevermore. Ain't you glad you got a living Savior today? I, I'm just thankful for that today. I don't know if I say anything else today. I'm glad I serve a living Savior, Brother Jordan. I'll say it again. I'm glad I serve someone that is alive today. And he's not dead today. Church, we walk around sometimes like we serve a dead God. I told Emily, we was walking to the tent one day, and I said, you know what, sometimes we walk, maybe we talked about this going down the road, I don't know. We had a long talk going to, to Walmart one day, and I said, you know, Sometimes we walk around with our heads down, so sad, so feel like we're defeated, act like we're defeated, like we serve a dead God. But we serve someone that is alive today. We ought to act like he's alive today. He's not dead. He's alive forevermore. He just gave us that word. It is letters in written in red. Words written in red. That's Jesus telling us, promising us that I am he that was dead, but I'm alive forevermore. Ain't you glad for that today? I'm glad he's alive forevermore. Amen. God loves all of us. She wanted, she wanted me to put this up. It says, he even loves the ones of them that do not like him. Ain't that good? <laughs> Ain't that good? From the, from the mouth of babes. From the mouth of babes. From the mouth of babes. That sounds Amen. something like what I heard Amen. a few years ago. I heard the kids talking about that, that he loved us so much. Know that we may never love him back. That's true love. That is true love, ain't it? Know that we may never love him back, Brother David. He loved us enough to still die for us. Still give his life for us. But I'm glad he's not dead anymore. I'm glad he's alive forevermore. He is alive today. He is alive forevermore. You know, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go to a wedding, a marriage one day. And we're part of the bride of Christ. Our groomsman is going to come and get us one day. We're part of that bride. Yeah. The Bible says, that he, I believe the Bible says somewhere in Revelation that his wife is ready. It's ready. I believe we're looking at the times that we're living in today, and I believe that the bride of Christ is ready. We have made ourselves, have you made yourself ready? I've made myself ready, and I'm wearing a white robe. I got my wedding garment on. Hey, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I know I'm a man in this natural flesh, but I'm part of the bride of Christ, and I am wearing my wedding. Do you have your wedding garments on tonight? Bobby was talking about this a few weeks ago, and it gave me a little idea for a message. But it, I don't know if that's tonight or not. But 
I want to make sure that my wedding garment is on. Do you have your wedding garments on? Because there are people in this world that are that are not they're not wearing their wedding garments like they should. They're they're throwing their wedding garments off. And they're throwing it off and throwing it in the garbage and just turning their backs on the Lord, giving up. I don't have no idea what is is possessing these people to give up on the Lord. Yeah, I do. It's the devil. But I, I just, I can't understand. Like Bobby said, I can't understand somebody telling me with their own mouth, with their own words, I just don't want to do it anymore. That, that, that just, that is so sad and so heartbreaking to me. It broke my heart when I heard those words because. It's a good friend of mine, and it broke my heart for somebody to tell me, I just don't want to do it anymore. Throwing their wedding garments out and just just, just giving up on the Lord. But I want to make sure that my wedding garment is on. Don't you, Brother Ken? I want to make sure that I'm still wearing my wedding garments. How many here tonight has got their wedding garment on and you're ready to go? Do you have a seat at the marriage supper of the Lamb? I believe that i got a chair waiting on me at that marriage. There's going to be a marriage supper stretched out like you ain't never seen before. What a feast it's going to be. You ain't never seen a feast like this. We have some good dinners out here, but I'm going to tell you something. You ain't ever seen a feast like we're getting ready to have. There's going to be a table spread that is just goes as far as the eye can see. The numbers of the, the people that's going to be there are like the sands of the sea. And we're, I believe I got a chair waiting on me. I got a seat waiting on me at that marriage supper of the Lamb. Do you have a seat waiting at the marriage supper of the Lamb? Do you have? Are you ready? Are you ready tonight? I'm ready tonight. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to be was to come back tonight. And my number was called tonight. I'm ready to go. And I want to make heaven my home. I don't want to miss heaven for the world. There ain't nothing. There ain't nothing in this world worth missing out on what heaven has for me. Because Jesus, Jesus is going to be there. He said he's alive forevermore. And he holds the keys to death and hell. He holds the keys and he's going to be there. And I'm going with him one day after a while. I don't know about anybody else, but I'm going with him. I've already been blessed here tonight, Brother Bobby. Thank God for, for the quickening that the Spirit gives these mortal bodies. I, I, I'll be honest with you. I walked through them doors tonight thinking, I don't want to do nothing. I just want to sit back here and let Bobby do, do the preaching or Kenny, whoever, do the preaching tonight. I'm just going to sit back and I'm going to listen. I'm going to enjoy this night. And I told Emily at the house, I'm so tired. I, don't, I, I think I'm going to tell Bobby, just go ahead and preach. I don't feel like it tonight. I don't have it in me tonight. She said, the Lord, the Lord will get a hold of you. You know he will. She told me, she showed me, she showed me what. I want you to know something tonight. God is good tonight. God is good. We serve a good God tonight. We serve a good God. I thank him. And I want, let me read you something else today. I was reading this up the house. Today. I'm just going to let God have to wait tonight. I don't, I don't. Revelations 19. I'm going to read to you a few verses. And just let this bless your heart. Let this sink into you tonight. Sink into your heart and your spirit. And just let God bless you here tonight with these scriptures. These are great scriptures. It goes right along with what, I'm, what, I'm, what I've been talking about. Revelations 19. And after these things I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments. For he has judged the great whore which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and hath avenged the blood of him, blood of his servants at her hand. Y'all don't laugh at me. I got to do this. I can't see you anymore. And again they said, Hallelujah. And her smoke rose up forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshiped God that sat at the throne saying, Amen. Hallelujah. And a voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God, all ye servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard as it were, a, were the voice of a great multitude, and the voice of many waters, and the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. You guys know what omnipotent means? All powerful. That is, God is all powerful and He reigns today. I looked up the definition of that, to that today and it says all powerful. He is an almighty, all powerful God. He has all power in His hands. 
Ain't you glad for that today? We got we serve a God that is almighty and all powerful today. I love him today, don't you? Yes, praise God. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come. <laughs> yeah, thank the Lord. And his wife, here's what I was just talking yeah. about. His wife has made herself ready. Oh, we're ready tonight, church. We are the bride of Christ. We are the wife that it's talking about right here. The wife has made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. Oh, praise the Lord. And he said unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. I'm glad I'm called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Ain't you? And he said unto me, These are the true saints of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See that thou doest not, I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus, worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the Spirit of of prophecy. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. I'm telling you, we were describing Jesus right here. I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he does judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a, with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. Word of God. His name is called the Word of God. And uh, the armies which were in heaven followed him. That's us church. We're coming back with him upon white horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that, that with it he shall smite the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the, of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And listen to this church. This will bless your heart if you let it. And he has on his vesture, on his thigh, a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Yeah. He is our omnipotent Savior. He is our omnipotent, almighty, and all-powerful Savior. He's going to come back one day. He's going to put an end to this mess that's going on in this world. It's all going to be over. The devil and his demons and his his devils are all going to be defeated one day after a while because Jesus is coming back and riding on a white horse in the clouds, brother. And he's going to put an end to this mess that's going on. You know who's coming with him? The Bible just told you who's going to come with him. The saints, we're going to come with him riding on horses. But I got good news for you. We're not going to have to lift a finger to fight this war because Jesus is going to defeat this world with the sword, with the word, with the word of God. He's going to defeat the devil with this right here. That's the sword that he's talking about. This right here is going to defeat the devil. Ain't you glad you serve a living Savior? Amen. Well, I've already been blessed. Thank the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are you still fired? Not now. Y'all did it for now. No, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm, I just love him today. He still amazes you, don't know. He is. Yeah. I've been, I've been serving him for 35 years, Bobby, and he still amazes me. He still is amazing to me. Y'all pray for me and my daughter. I told her last week, I said, we're going to learn a new song. There you go. And the new song is titled, She Needs to Be Up for Something. God's Amazing Grace okay. Still Amazes Me. That's the name of the song. And I want her to learn that with me. I told her, I said, I feel like the Lord is telling me to let you learn that with me. No, we're not talking about Cassie. <laughs> She's pointing to Gracie. <laughs> but... Y'all pray for us that we can get time to learn that one day. Because I really believe it will bless your hearts when we do. Because His grace, His grace is so amazing that it truly does still amaze me sometimes. Sunday, <clears throat> this past Sunday, His amazing grace amazed me beyond words. Like He did the rest of the church, I'm sure. Sunday, he really amazed me, brother Bobby. He amazed me tonight. All day, all day long. It was a day, wasn't it? it was. A, that's why I thought somebody. I said, "This has been a day. This has been a day that God has just left me." I, honestly, he left me speechless. I posted it on Facebook. I know, but he actually left me speechless. I didn't know what to say about something like that. That was awesome. It's such a great feeling. Such a great anointing. 
and a great feeling to feel that kind of blessing. If you miss Sunday, you miss something. I'm telling you, that was great. That was awesome. But he did tell me a while ago, there's more. There's more available if we want it. If we want to be blessed, God will bless. He will give us. But all we got to do is throw a log on the fire. All we got to do is stir up the gift that's inside of us. It's what the Bible teaches us to do. Stir up the gift which is inside of you. You just got to stir it up sometimes. It ain't up to me to stir it up. It ain't up to Bobby to stir it up or the singers. You got to stir it up yourself. The gift's in you. The gift's in you. It's not in Your gift is not in me. My gift's not in you. I have to stir up my own gift for myself. I thank God for his, his blessings tonight. Let me tell you how good God is. Bobby, I don't think he, he's, told, he's told this yet. <clears throat> told you guys, uh, some of you have heard that we had a, uh, a pastor from a church down in Chapmanville that wanted to sell a baptistry. And we've been talking about trying to get a baptistry in the, here in the church. He wanted to sell that baptistry for, for $1,000. And he put it on the... Put it on Facebook, and I, I think I posted it to our page, our private page <clears throat> when we was on vacation a few weeks ago. Bobby was like, "Just go get it," you know. But I was like, I was really busy at the time; I wasn't even here. But uh, honestly, didn't even think no more about it. And uh, somebody mentioned something about it Sunday, and I sent the guy a message before I came to church Sunday night, and uh, said, "By any chance, just curious, do you still have? Did you sell the baptistry?" You know, and. Uh, Thinking it was already probably already sold, you know, and he said, "No, I sure haven't. If you're interested, let me know." And uh, I told him, "I said, you know, I'm a pastor at Lundell Church, and uh, we talked about it." And I said, "I'll talk to my pastor, and I'll see what well, this is still the route we want to go, and I'll let you know." And he said, "I tell you what, let me tell you how good God is." He said, "I tell you what," he said, "since it's going to be used for a church, if you want it, you can have it from a blessing from the Lord." Yesterday, we went down yesterday and picked it up. Me and Emily and Cassie and Gracie and Justin went down and picked it up. And uh, it's up at the house. We'll, we'll get it put in when we can. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> I, we went down and picked it up. And he was telling me a story about he had some missionaries come in. And they built a new church is what it is. It's Stryker Church. Don God busy. his name. You guys, everybody knows him, I'm sure. But they built a new church, very nice church. He took us on a tour of the whole new church and everything. It was very nice. And uh, the old church across the road, it, they had some missionaries come in and build him shelves through that church. So they're going to use that church as a food pantry now to help the need. Great, that's a great thing to do. But he looked at, uh, he said one of the guys, the leaders of that uh, missionary team from South Carolina, saw the, the baptistry sitting on the porch and he told him he was going to sell it for $1,000 and everything and he said he got up in my ear and whispered he said I feel like God is telling me to tell you that if you're going to give that to a church you need to give it to a church mm -hmm. and so he felt like that was God telling him to bless another same. church yeah. and, and we are the fortunate we are the fortunate church that got blessed Amen. from that, from that year and we thank God for that thank God for we well, glory to God. Amen. But I wanted to share that with you tonight before I sit down. And we just want to thank God for that and thank uh, John Gobby and the Striker Bible Church down there in Chapelville. They're on Crawley down there. Uh, thank, we thank them. And I told them, I said, I can't thank you enough for what you've done. That's, that is such a nice gesture. It's such a blessing to have people like him that, that would do something like that. And anything we can do to help him out, I feel like we should do. I, I really do. Because that just returned the favor. Pass it on along to another church or something, but we need, we we just, yeah, we we had stuff like this happen before, yeah. yeah. So we're just blessed by God, yeah. yeah, blessed by God. But I thank God for that. Thank God for the word tonight. Thank God for giving me something. Right. Uh, just uh, give me a blessing tonight. I love you today, and I'm still, I'm still blessed. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Me and George had one of them glory moments. Yeah. Oh, yeah? When they came up here and read the prayer, we'd have our prayer and stuff. The glory bumps came upon both of us. Y'all know how we do. We get up there and we rub arms and rub. And we want to share the glory of God. 
It's not our glory, is it, Joe? It's the glory of God He puts upon us. And maybe we want to share. And we had us a glory time, didn't we, Brother Joe? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Emily got her some of that over here, too. She came up for the choir. Now, you see what we go through over here? We get this all the time. She got some of it while we Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And speaking of Emily, she used to sing in church with her dad and her sisters. And I think she ought to be included in some of the songs with her husband and yeah, her daughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I know for a fact that that was some of her blessings that she received when she did that. We all love God. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Amen. Praise the Lord. You keep on testifying yeah. for the Lord. Honey. That's right. These, these kids, I'm proud of these oh, kids. Oh, I am too. I'm Amen. Proud. I'm proud. Yes. I just got a feeling that uh, Jerry wants to sing his song tonight. I don't know. Just the Lord's putting it on my heart. Jerry come up and sing uh, that old song he does up there. I got shoes on my feet. Food on the table. Yeah, yeah. And if he would, I, I'd like for him to do that. Because that's Jerry's blessing, too. Yeah. When he comes up and does that for the Lord, yeah. you can see the blessings of Kevin might be able to play for him. I don't know. We miss her. Y'all pray that uh, we can get Harold back into the church. Yeah. He ain't quit church or nothing, but get him to come back and, yeah. and uh, get these, all these guitars lined back up. Yeah. Amen. All right. Pray for him. Tonight.
be more like the children. Bring it to the altar. Praise God. Sunday, in the Lord's will, 1030, we'll be having Sunday school. Aren't you glad to see the board this morning or last Sunday, how it rose in numbers? And the offering's good too, but the most important thing is those numbers. And I have been smiling in my spirit the whole week over that. And then, of course, we all know how. I... I think I need to apologize to God because I did think about having church on Monday night and uh, I just let the flesh cheat me out of it. I thought, well, we're all tired. Probably most of them. I should have just went ahead on out and, and done it. And so, uh, I'm sorry, Lord. <laughs> Thank you. And he said, I forgive you. <laughs> all right, and then Sunday night we're going to be having feet washing and sacred service. Old-fashioned community. If you haven't been in it, come on out and get in it. Because it, it is a special blessing. All right. We'll be preaching that one. Anybody else want to make announcements or anything? You can have a copy. I have a copy. Go ahead. Go ahead.